Welcome to today's EL lesson. Today we are going to be sorting tools into two categories. We're going to be deciding if they're cleaning tools or painting tools. We're also going to read the book Tools, some pages on there, reread a couple of pages on there by Ann Morris. Remember this book is about different tools and how different people use tools. Those are the two things we're going to be doing in today's lesson. Let me go ahead and share the screen with you so that you can follow along with me. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the beginning. We have two learning targets for today. The first one is I can sort tools into categories. Remember I said earlier, we're gonna be looking at painting tools and cleaning tools. The second um, target is I can answer questions about key ideas using photographs and the text tools, this book. Today, when we meet during our Zoom, we have some discussion norms. When you're meeting with a partner, if we go into breakout rooms, you need to remember to listen with your ears with care. Look at the speaker when they're talking. Make sure that you're making eye contact. Remember, we have these eyeballs to remind us to do that. You're going to also be practicing taking turns, so it's a conversation where we share the conversation. I say something, you say something. I say something you say something. Today, we'll remember this little image of how we should listen. We should listen with care, with our heart, with our brain, with our ears, and with our eyes. As we look at the next page, we're going to reread some pages in the book Tools. We're going to reread page 18 to 27. So when I open up my book and I go to page 18, it says, people use tools to make things. This gentleman is making something or is using something to make a bracelet. He's using a tool to make a bracelet. And we look at the index later on today, we'll see what tool he's using. This lady is knitting and he's hammering a nail into some kind of leather. You see the background image. Um, so they're using tools to make things. On the next page, they're using tools to fix things. This gentleman is fixing shoes. It looks like they might have some kind of fishing line or something that they're working on. They also use tools to clean. If you look at that gentleman, you'll see all the tools in his hand. I see a shovel, a broom, maybe some type of tongs. And this lady has a broom and she's cleaning things. Tools help us to write. It looks like they're using a whiteboard and expo. When we look at the index, we'll truly find out that that's not what they're using. They are from a different country and we'll find out where and what they're using. And also people use tools to couch. So two different classrooms in different countries. And draw, people use tools to draw and paint. Tools help us worth our work. Remember the purpose of tools is help us to get our job done easier. So they help us to do our work and to get it done easier. They make our lives easier. And there's a family working together with tools. So if we look at the index, I wanted to visit the gentleman that was um, working on the jewelry. This gentleman is from America, from the United States, and he's using, it says back here, needle-nosed pliers to squeeze silver into setting that will hold a turquoise stone on the bracelet he has designed. So he's using a needle-nosed pliers to put stone and metal into the bracelet that he's making. And then these children on this page are from India. And they're not using a whiteboard and expo like we use. Instead, they're using, it says on here, homemade pens and wooden slates instead of paper and pencil. After class, the slates will be whitewashed so they can be again used the next day. So I hope you enjoyed looking closer at that story and seeing how people use tools in different ways to get the job done. 
Now we are going to look closely at a picture and you're going to think about which categories the picture goes in. So you're gonna look closely with your magnifying glass. You're going to think with your brain, which category does this picture go into? And you're going to match each picture to the category. I'm gonna stop sharing for just a second because I need to scramble up the pages. I was playing with it earlier are the pictures and I forgot to unscramble them. So I want them to be scrambled so that you can do the thinking and not me. So if we come back up to our Zoom and I go back up to our share, I'm getting good at this, don't you think? <laughs> oh, funny. Anyhow, you can see that we're gonna sort these pictures into either cleaning tools, let's get our highlighter, either cleaning tools, or painting tools. So let's look at this first picture. This picture is using a brush. This boy is using a brush. He's using the brush to make something. Is he cleaning with the brush or painting with the brush? If you said painting, you are correct. This woman is sweeping. Is she cleaning with the broom? or is she painting with the broom? If you said cleaning, again, ding, 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 you are correct. This is an example of watercolors. If you've ever used watercolors, you know you don't use them to clean with, they are messy. You use them to paint with, and this girl is vacuuming. She's not painting with the vacuum, she is cleaning with the vacuum. I think you guys got all of those right. We have two painting and two cleaning. Now it's time to do your writing. Today's writing is going to have you think about this question. What is a tool that you use? I want you to think about a tool that you use to either clean with or paint with. You're going to draw that tool and label it, and then you're going to respond to this question. How does this tool help you do your job? Remember, you're thinking about a tool that you clean with or that you paint with, and you're going to write about how it helps you to do your job. Now, if you're in kindergarten, I want you to draw and label and then record yourself answering that question. If you are in first grade, you're going to draw, label, and write a great sentence with a capital and period telling me how you use that tool to help you do your job. Of course, if you are in kindergarten and you want to be pushed, you can try to write a sentence as well with a capital and period. Um, good luck on this assignment. I can't wait to see you in our Zoom meeting to see what you've drawn and what you've recorded or what you've written about. I'm looking forward to seeing all of you soon, and I hope you are having a wonderful, wonderful day.